Welcome back to the channel, it's me, your boy Isaiah, and let's talk about In a Violent Nature. For those who don't know, it is a horror movie that just dropped, I think, about a week ago. Maybe it's out this week. But either way, it is a horror movie that has a lot of people expressing their opinions, and a lot of people can't decide whether or not they like or dislike this movie, which is always fascinating when it comes to movies and perspectives on how people view things, because boy, is the reaction, I think, relatively mixed, especially from the general audience, which I think is more important than a critic's opinion. No offense to the critics getting paid. I respect the hustle, get the bag player. We're all trying to get bags out here but i think for me when i look at reviews online i generally like to look from the fan perspective because most time you know i'm a fan i'm not a critic i'm not analyzing every single scene at one point in my life i low-key was we don't gotta talk about that i was almost a film major and then i encountered other film people uh, we'll get into it okay uh listen in a Violent Nature is a horror movie based on the perspective of the horror movie character. And in this movie, the character's name is Johnny. Very creative name. Not really going to complain about it, but either way, the whole premise is following him around as he's going on this crazy murdering rampage because a bunch of teens, I imagine, I don't know their age range, right? Um, but it's following his perspective after they stole his mom's necklace where he happened to have been buried in the middle of the woods and his neck the necklace was wrapped around a pipe the, his little origin story little uh, i don't know what we're doing here but either way uh he does not have a gravesite instead he is just buried in the middle of the woods fascinating either way um the uniqueness about this film is once again the, the fact that it's the perspective of the actual horror movie character that's out here killing people and i listen I didn't know we were gonna get that gory into this movie. I thought it'd be like a little, little, little chop, chop, chop. There's some crazy ass scenes and we'll explore that a little bit later because I do think that is one of the high points of the movie uh, because they did, I think, given the limited budget and everything, I think they did a very fantastic job with some of the kills in this. But either way, we're gonna talk about a lot of things I didn't like and more specifically, the idea of this movie, I quickly fell out of love with. Now, when I mean it's following the perspective of the horror movie character, it's following Johnny, right? Following him around, is that it's third person camera points. It's almost like you're playing a video game and that's the camera angle you're getting. So you're following him, he's behind here, like the camera's over here, and it's just the back of his head. And there's so many shots throughout this entire movie. I would say probably at least well over 50% of this movie is shot like that, where it's just camera behind him and he's walking in the woods and it's a non-stop just like ch -ch -ch -ch, he just leaves rustling wind breezing what's that a deer sound a bird sound you're he it's low-key a freaking nature documentary if you really want to take it from that perspective that'd be interesting take an edible go into it thinking you're watching a nature doc pff, mind blown but the fact that i would say well over 50 percent of this entire movie is that one camera view and it's his perspective i think the gimmick very quickly runs out for me now maybe once again this is my opinion i don't know how much my opinion really matters maybe you find this uh very similar to how you felt about the movie but as i'm watching i was like it, there's no way this is going to be the entire movie right there's like there's no this is going to be like a quick five minute intro and then we'll kind of explore different angles and perspectives from everything um because i didn't want to watch a bunch of trailers and kind of have the entire movie ruined for me i just saw a general concept as i was scrolling tiktok so it worked tiktok it worked um so i didn't really know the entire premise of it i kind of went to it blindly and the fact that that is what it was was highly disappointing like i get it in theory like if i saw that i think um i think halloween had a similar scene where it's kind of following michael myers around from that angle and it was like oh that's really cool it's a very creative scene and it's kind of one of the highlights of that movie um one of the more recent halloweens but so you have that camera angle and like in that movie it works great because it's one two minutes maybe five minutes max that scene right in this movie it's about an hour 45 i imagine hour 30 right and it is a good chunk like 50 minutes is just that angle and it's like okay this is this is too much well we're doing too much of a good thing like this is something once again quick little segment there segment here really explore that angle and then you're cooking the fact that it's the entire movie very frustrating now there's another angle there's a lot of camera decisions i absolutely despise and this one i specifically made like a mental note because i was disgusted by the scene now that, that is a crazy word to use for <laughs> reviewing a movie but there's a scene they're at a campfire right and it's your typical kind of horror movie trope where they're in a campfire and they're talking about the origins of the horror movie character right and it's like this person uh was at a camp and he was slow and then so they're describing his intro you could watch the movie yeah. once again you're gonna have some spoilers it's not gonna be the entire movie for you all right pay money support your act no um so they have that little scene going on and typically you would imagine from this angle it would just be like a far shot because once again now i'm kind of internally registering that this movie is going to be solely the perspective 
of the horror movie character. It is not in this scene and a bunch of other scenes, so that kind of disrupts the disillusion, the the illusion of that entire scenario. So sometimes I think they were a little confused about what they wanted to be entirely as well. Either way, we'll discuss that more, but there's this camera angle, they're at the campfire scene, and it's just going in a circle over and over and over and over again. So it's six people, I think, in a circle, and it's just slow panning, yeah, and, and listen, I think like something like that 70s show, how they had the little circle joint rotation, everything. That's cool. But once again, that's like two minutes max, that entire scene. And it's not slowly going in a circle like this, slowly but surely making sure we get every single person on camera. No, it goes this quick. And then, and then it goes like, you know what I mean? And this one was so slow and it was so long. And if you're someone that gets dizzy, you're gonna be like, damn, I need this scene to freaking change. That scene will last it way too long. And then at that moment, because it's relatively early into the movie, very early on, I was like, I feel like I could probably leave the theater and do something else because this first few minutes here, is a tough freaking watch especially once again the camera work decision all over the place because sometimes they have the perspective from the horror movie character right and if they were going to commit to that commit to it 100 percent. okay uh don't half-ass it do 50 and then do these weird type of camera angles and this 10 percent of your movie is going to be this revolving circle shot around a campfire like that shit was frustrating now uh, there's a bunch of other scenes now um where it's now filmed like a normal movie, as if you're watching the typical slasher. So once again, the idea that this is supposed to be following his perspective, you could have done a lot with it, not just a third perspective. It could have been like hands-on, like first-person point of view, all these things going on. Um, maybe once again, the budget didn't permit for that to happen, and they had to kind of cut corners here and there. Understandable. I'm just saying a lot of these shots had me very confused on what exactly the point of having this entire thing. There was no cohesion in how this movie was filmed at all, in my personal opinion. Uh, and there's also some weird resolution issues. Now, this is like super in-depth, I guess. Um, but there's that points where it feels like a retro movie. Then it feels like a 4K brand new movie. Then it feels like, okay, maybe it was from five years ago. And there's so many different resolution shots as well. The whole camera work resolution, everything involved in that ends of things. I don't know what was going on. Very confusing, okay? Now, another thing that's confusing to me, right? It is the timeline of this movie. Because when I started watching it, at first I thought, oh, this could probably be modern day. Police are conversating uh, with, with some random guy. He gets killed in the beginning. You get that little intro, right? He changes costumes, doesn't matter. When you're introduced to like the group of the, the horror movie, right? Where it kind of has all these tropes with all these stupid teenagers, I imagine, or young 20 year old people, right? So they have all these people and internally, as they're doing this campfire scene, once again, you're getting introduced to all these people. I couldn't tell you their names because they were not very memorable people. Um, but you have these people getting introduced and it felt very much like it was now taking. Why is that a thumbs up? Disgusting. I hate you, OBS. Um, but as you're getting introduced to these people, you start to think, hmm, is this like based in the 70s because now you have this random dude that has like these very outdated headphones on right around his neck which why are we going out camping and you're the only one wearing headphones there's speakers playing everyone's drinking beer and you're just wearing headphones that's bizarre now nonetheless he doesn't have it attached to an iphone or it doesn't have it attached to an mp3 player instead it's like a walkman vhs tape player in his freaking pocket which is Weird and curious. So that internally you would think, oh, this is 70s, 80s type of era. So cell phones not going to be usable until one of the characters is like, oh, my God, uh, let's go for a selfie and then takes a fucking selfie. I was internally I had registered this movie taking place in the 70s and then illusion gone. Now, mind you, yet again, when they, things start popping off, people are dying left and right. Not a single person made a phone call to the police. Not a single person was like, maybe we should go seek help through the telephones. Like Now, maybe they did. And maybe that's a scene you didn't get to see from the perspective of the killer. But you can't even use that excuse because there's multiple scenes not from the perspective of the killer. So I'm just saying, there's a bunch of loopholes and confusion when it comes to camera work and character work and timing. There's a lot of things I was left very confused by. Now, <laughs> I you know, there's a lot of negative going on right now i don't want to be that guy we'll get to positives eventually um listen, the thing that also frustrated me the most 
um, before we get into some good things, right, is specifically the ending. And, and for those who don't know, once again, if you haven't seen it, and maybe you're never going to see it, continue watching. If you haven't seen it, you plan on watching it, pause it, watch it, come back, and tell me how, because I want, I want to hear from the people, okay? Uh, maybe I'm going crazy, and maybe I'm overthinking as I'm in this theater. But, um, so the ending was very stupid. I thought it was very just like left thinking th there's no way this is the actual ending right and then the credits rolled and this isn't some type of avengers movie where there's some bonus content at the end i knew the movie was over and i was just like did i just get robbed by this filmmaker like i feel like i feel the story wasn't done you know like, there's still plenty of to be explored um hopefully not in an actual sequel but um the ending was very stupid so there's one person remaining once again, do not know the name, not gonna even try to Google the name because I don't think it's important. Um, so they have that one character left. She's the girl, she survives somehow, some way. She managed to get out of the woods and she's walking and she's walking. And once again, you're getting a lot of fucking walking scenes in this movie, which once again, now that I think about it, Loki was a nature doc. But either way, ladies walking, walking, walking. Finally, after getting impaled by a wooden stick uh takes it out finally finds someone in a car and then you think oh this lady's low-key kind of creepy maybe she's working with our guy johnny and she's gonna bring her to johnny and sacrifice her and somehow they're tied together that's the ending and you think oh well that makes sense because there's a bunch of creepy shit going on in these woods why not a creepy lady right that's not what happened instead you get a solid 15 20 minute scene of the girl driving with a random lady in a red pickup truck and they're driving and driving and she's trying to keep the conversation going and then she notices that the girl that's been just through the most ridiculous night ever is losing a lot of blood so she tries to keep her awake telling her stories and all those things going on right so she tries to keep her awake when she starts nodding off and she's like you got to stay awake i'm gonna tie this around your leg so you don't continue to lose blood right cool now this is once again the scene where you would think oh he's magically caught up to them and he's gonna kill them both or oh she's finally or the guy's caught up and now they're gonna have this big fight payoff and we're gonna finally have a resolution johnny dies or the girl dies doesn't matter at this point right you just think we're gonna get a definitive conclusion of this movie instead wraps up her little thing and there's this weird 30 second stare into the woods right and you think johnny's gonna appear johnny does not appear instead they get back in the car and that's it and then they go into random nature shots again and the movie closes to credits there was no resolution or point for that 15, 20 minute dialogue between that random lady and this random girl, not random girl. We knew this girl. She definitely has a name, right? But you have this conversation going on and it leads nowhere. It was a waste. There's so much wasted time and movement and energy into this movie where I almost felt that they had written an hour long special for Hulu, which I think would have been perfect. If this was like an hour long on Hulu, on freaking Tubi, on any other streaming platform, this would have been the perfect kind of exploration of this idea, right? If it's just an hour, the fact that they really went out of their way to make this an hour 30, I think really significantly hurt the movie. And it was very frustrating because once again, there are good elements. Like there's a lot of cool things that they did that they could have done and furthermore, um, and it just felt like it dragged for too long. And once again, if you watch the movie, there's so many moments where you're like, this is going to lead somewhere, right? Like, are we going to get out of the scene? And it doesn't. It just keeps on going. Like, I, I can tell you, 50% of this movie is just people walking through the woods. There's no one getting hurt. There's no one, like, running away from anything. There's no danger. There's no mysterious clues into what's going to happen later on in the movie there's no discovery of some ancient spell and now this is how johnny's out here killing people no it's just him walking or it's just the girl walking at the end there's so much walking in this movie i feel like i burned a thousand calories watching it bro it's too much now once again this movie would have been fantastic like i really think if it was an hour movie fast pace you want to explore these walking shots every now and then 30 second timeline jumps those at max could have been 30 seconds each scene of him walking they were not they were at least a minute and a half or more per time you see him walking either way those are a lot of frustrations to have with this movie i will say there are some unique things about this movie that i actually really like not to me 
There's a lot of cameras that do happen off camera, right? Or a lot of cameras that, a lot of kills that happen off camera. So you don't really see the person die, but it's, it's alluded to like, okay, clearly that person dies, right? And um, that's fine because once again, this isn't like a freaking Transformers movie where there's hundreds of millions of dollars invested into this film franchise and they can do unlimited graphic effects and everything. So I understand that perfectly fine. No complaints about that. But the kills you did get on camera were fucking crazy now the, and, and once again in the beginning i was like oh that seems like relatively normal for a horror movie right like person gets like ch 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 chopped off by a tree and cool no issues there standard procedure right but then i feel like it it, it got real personal and now once again he starts killing people and, and it's the group that is in these woods having a random party which once again if we haven't learned anything in society about what you want to do with friends it's one thing i will never do is go into the middle of the woods have a campfire have a party have a meetup anywhere in the middle of the woods i don't want that smoke secondly i'm not renting an airbnb for my entire life because i saw a movie changed my entire perspective not doing it um but there is this beginning kill he kills the guy with the walkman and it, once again very well done scene that's the first i think real kill you see on camera and it's not just like oh he killed somebody um so he kills him and he's against this tree he goes behind him and has like this machete and then choo, cuts off his head brutal scene like i, uh, I i'm kind of underselling it very brutal scene very crazy but once again it's something that is likely you've seen it close to enough in another movie now there's another the next kill that he gets is is a girl and she's out here swimming right and that's one just pulled underwater you don't see any crazy violence he just floats up and then he gets out of the water cool that's a unique a unique angle that it had going on and it was very well done as well the thing that i that really caught my attention I, i'm assuming a bunch of other people if they've done reviews about this movie i would probably love this scene because i think <laughs> bro i don't know what their budget was 80% of it went into this one particular kill and there's a squirrel doing yoga and she's on this giant hill, right? And he's just slowly walking. And once again, you see this man slowly walk his giant ass up this hill just to kill this lady doing yoga. And I don't know what this man had against. I don't know what Johnny's beef with freaking yoga was, but it felt very personal because once again, until we got to this point, relatively normal horror movie kills. What I saw on the top of that mountain was downright fucking crazy. I don't know how to explain it. I feel like this is probably something you need to watch and see. And once again, I probably wouldn't recommend every person to watch this, but if you're really into horror movies and you really like kind of different ideas explored in the world of horror, I would say at least check it out for this scene. Everything else you could probably like fast forward. Like this would be a great streaming movie that like you could just fast forward through a lot of the walking. But this scene is so crazy to me um, for numerous reasons. One, the visual effects were freaking insane. So in order to really kind of visualize this for you, close your eyes, imagine a white lady with blonde hair doing yoga on the top of a mountain and then the guy he's slowly walking he's jacked he's big bro and he's just like falcon punches her through like her back into her stomach like full-on hand through sternum right and he's just like in there ripping guts out and then he has like this hook takes the lady's head and hooks her through and then like brings the neck outside of the back and now she's like a bowling ball and then he's just like Kicks her off the freaking mountain. She rolls down. The thing that I also found curious, um, because it, this seems fucking crazy, um, is as he has like his hand just like fully inside her, it's like fully like she should be dead. And there's this like weird moment where like she turns around and it's like she's still like alive. And it's like she's kind of just registering, oh man. I'm dead. Like, th that's what her face was given. Bro. Her face was given like, damn, I really just died. Uh, and it's just, I don't know how else to like mentally or verbally say it, but I <laughs> like, I'm not supposed, like, that's not a scene you're supposed to laugh at. I just thought, that whether this is on purpose or not, her visual expression of just being like, damn, you got me like this, bro, is freaking hilarious. Secondly, I also found it interesting that as she finds this person, um, pulling up on her because she thinks a girl's coming they're gonna have some crazy scissor action on top of this mountain um she turns around notices it's, it's a crazy murderer not the girl right she turns around looks at him and then she starts screaming right and then she looks behind and says like this big ass cliff right in that moment whether once again i don't know if this is on purpose or not 
I don't know if it's the Zen energy that this yoga character is supposed to have, but I thought this was incredibly unique, hilarious for so many absurd reasons. Um, she just kind of accepts it. She accepts like, ah, oh, damn, I'm, this is how I'm going out. Because she doesn't try to like run away. She just screams and then she's looking at him. And then she kind of gives this expression like, really? And then, and then like the whole scene happens, right? So that I thought was hilarious. And was, I don't know if it was on purpose. If it was, kudos to that because that scene just lives. Not even like the crazy graphical part. Just the fact that that character is like, damn. I'm really going out like this. Like, that was hilarious to me. Secondly, another kind of back to frustrations about the movie, um, not to, like, go back to dogging it, but that was another curious thing about this entire movie is that in most horror movies, right, they always try to at least fight back. Like, they're running away, or they're, like, as they're getting choked out, they're, like, punching him, right? I feel like a lot of these characters just accepted that they were dying, um, which is very interesting. I don't know why that decision was made or if it was on purpose or they were just like, mm, we don't want anyone getting hurt on set, so don't hit the actor. Um, but I was like, why is everyone just accepting? Like, I feel like there wasn't a knife. Uh, there wasn't enough fight back uh, between the people that are getting just brutally murdered in the woods and the killer. Either way, um, those are, I guess, the highlights of the movie. And once again, I think this movie, for what it's worth, I will give it a 5 out of 10. This should have been an hour-long movie on Hulu, on Netflix, on any platform you could think of, even Tubi. Shout out to Tubi, the people on Tubi. I just feel it was too long, and they specifically left scenes significantly too long because they had to make sure that this was an hour 30 and that they could put it in theaters. I think that's the frustrating thing is that they were defeated by the chase of being a theatrical release. Maybe that's what it was. Um, but overall, I would give this movie a 5 out of 10. If you're super into horror genres, maybe I would give it a watch, but this isn't something I would go back and be like, damn, it's on Netflix, I gotta watch it. Like, it doesn't have that type of energy for me, and I don't know. I would love to know your people's thoughts on that, but we're, we're gonna continue doing other reviews here, because this is the show I do. Um, listen, this one will be more positive, actually, but one of my favorite freaking bands dropped an album this week. Or last week. Either way, we're talking about it today. Because for those who don't know, the Marias have done ahead and dropped an instant freaking classic. Like, completely polar opposite of the movie we just read. The Marias album, Submarine, is so freaking good, bro. And I will say, I think the best way to kind of describe this album is... um beautifully heartbreaking like it's so beautifully well done instrumentally obviously the voice is incredible throughout the entire album and stylistically very amazing and very on brand for what the marias typically do with their work now i say it's also heartbreaking because the entire album is somehow heartbreaking like there's not like something like oh this is like a feel-good song i feel good about my life i feel like i could take on the world i feel like i might win the lottery if i wake up tomorrow this is not the album for it even though for some reason like a couple of tracks just because of pace and energy in the actual uh song you can chill out to you're like oh this is a nice song and then you kind of really listen to what the lyrics are being said you're like this is kind of fucking depressing and it's great. Like it's, it's a great balance of, once again, beautifully heartbreaking. Uh, I'm sure someone's already written plenty of reviews using that exact phrase. Uh, so it's not really initially creative on my end. My bad. I'm assuming somebody has come up to the same conclusion because I think that is what the idea they were going for. Now, um, once again, complete album. I don't think there are any skips in my personal opinion. Is it biased? Absolutely. But here are some of my top tracks that I recommend to you. Take a listen to it. I would say Echo, Paranoia, and Sienna. Those are my top three songs, strictly based on vibe, energy, and how it makes me feel internally. Now, there's one song I would like to specifically highlight, and that is Sienna. Because as you listen to it, once again, it's like... The melody and everything is something that should be like relaxing. Like this is very beautiful song. Like I, I like this. I vibe with it. And then you're like, who hurt you? Why, why, why did you have to put that pain onto me? I was chilling, and now I'm like mourning the death of a kid I've never even had. So for those who don't know, Sienna is kind of like, um, it's kind of you know how like in a relationship, right? If you're taking it seriously, um. You kind of have these, you 
envisualize a future, right? Like you conceptualize a future with that person, right? So whether it's you get married one day, you have kids one day, you go on vacation, all those things. This song is specifically centered around the idea of having that kid that never gets to exist. And just, it's so freaking crazy, bro. Now, once again, for me, this is something you just gotta experience. I can't really verbally tell you how it made me feel, um, but just know it's 10 out of 10. I highly recommend, incredible. Nothing but hit after hit after hit, and bro, I need to see them on tour, bro. I don't know if it's gonna be in the New Jersey area. Maybe I'll make a, like, a nice little weekend trip, go somewhere, because um, <laughs> your boy needs a fucking break. Um, but. That is kind of my general thoughts on Submarine. It is a 10 out of 10 instant classic. All right, so that was two random reviews. Uh, I was going to do another reaction to this car collecting thing. I have nothing really to add. I'm not sure why this became a discussion piece, why people are um, very anti or for putting the cart away. I think there's an easy solution. Just put the cart away. That's my very insightful conversation point on that. I initially recorded a little bit more on it. I was like, this, this is stupid. This I don't understand why I'm talking about this. Either way, um, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You can listen to the strictly audio version on Spotify. I'll link it. Um, but either way, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll be back hopefully next week. Maybe. If not, um, pretend like this part wasn't included in the video. But what you should do, subscribe, man. Help a player out. Help the police. Oh.